Get ready to step onto the field of life with Chad Hermanson, your host and certified life and performance coach. As a husband, father of four, and former Major League Baseball player, I understand the challenges athletes and parents face. In the Mental Edge Training Coach podcast, I'll share valuable insights, strategies, and stories to help athletes shine on the field and in life. Let's go. Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the podcast here. So athletes specializing early in their sport. I know if you're a parent, if you've had some athletes go through the process of starting young, starting at the age of, say, five, they're playing t-ball, and they start to get that itch to play their sport a little early, and they want to specialize and start doing it not only in the spring, let's say for baseball, but now we start talking about the spring, the summer, and then we go into the fall. And then the next thing, we've gone 10 months of just playing baseball. And athletes are starting to do this as young as what I'm seeing is seven and eight years old. Let me just give you a little bit of a background on my story. Uh, I grew up in Salt Lake City, so it's a colder climate. Obviously, there's snow, there's mountains, and I wasn't able to play baseball right, for 12 months out of the year or even 10 months out of the year. So how did it work for me? So when the fall came along, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about more roughly around the ages of when I was about nine years old, I started to play football. So between the ages of, say, nine to 11, we'll kind of go in that range here. But in the fall, football came, right? So I was super excited to start playing football. And, and grant, take for granted, this is in the this is in the 80s. This is about 1987, 88, <laughs> probably about 87. So I'm a kid growing up in the 80s. I didn't have a mullet quite yet, but it was coming. It was on the way. But my first year here of playing football, super excited. Went and played tackle football, scared to death to get tackled, to get hurt. But it was exciting. It was fun. And then once the football season was over, let's say that's about three months, roughly three or four months. Then it's still, it's freezing in, in Salt Lake. And so now the indoor game is basketball. So when basketball started, I couldn't wait to start playing basketball. Even when I was playing football, I was shooting hoops outside. My dad actually built a, a basketball hoop for me. And I started shooting hoops really early. And then it get to the point where you're playing basketball, right? Outside and you're like, dad, I need you to shovel the snow so I can go shoot a little bit of hoop. But that, that came in regards to the winter. So now I'm playing a completely different sport. And that's, again, roughly three, four months. And then all of a sudden the spring comes and now we got baseball. And I was excited about all three sports at the ages of eight, nine, 10, and 11. And that allowed me personally to enjoy the process of being an athlete, of watching all the sports on TV, right? This is the, this is the time when Michael Jordan was Jordan. He was becoming who he was. I was very excited about the NFL and became a fan of the NFL because I started to play football. So I'm now watching it on TV. So I'm now watching all the sports too and learning how these sports work by watching them on TV. So it was pretty exciting time as a kid, right? And you're starting to generate love for sport and you start to really generate the heroes <laughs> that you're that you're like Walter Payton and Michael Jordan, I living in Utah, I was a jazz fan. So Stockton to Malone. So my dad took me to jazz games. I'm loving all these sports. And then all of a sudden we have baseball where I'm starting to watch the Cubs on WGN, the Braves on TBS. Del Murphy was a big hero of mine growing up. Ryan Sandberg, Andre Dawson. So I'm starting to watch and learn all these games and was really immersed in that sport while it was playing. And then the summertime, I'm at the water park all year long, <laughs> right? Growing up, and I think it was what uh, Magic Waters out in Draper when I was growing up. That was the one that we went to. And my mom would drop me off and say, "Okay, you're going for f four or five hours. I'll see you." I can't even imagine dropping my nine or ten year old off in a water park for four or five hours nowadays. But that's the way it was in the '80s. We were rocking it. That was the routine, right? So from when I was about nine years old, nine, 10, 11. So those, that little three-year window when I lived in that cold weather climate, I didn't have that option to play baseball. 
So it was, but I was totally cool with that. And I, I didn't really, I loved baseball. It was probably my favorite sport, but I loved to shoot hoops. But that was the routine. And you just did it over and over again. And then when I got out here to Las Vegas, my dad moved us out here. I was 11 years old. And I'm like, what are we going to go live in a casino? At what, Las Vegas, are you serious? And so we move out to Las Vegas and we were, we, it was in the spring. So we were actually late for Little League sign up and very devastated about that. And so watched and the local Little League team was doing really well. And I was like, man, that would have been cool to be a part of that. And having no idea like how good the baseball players are out here. But we happened to live a year or two later, we moved right next door to the president of the Little League. And so we got to know them really well. And my dad's like, hey, we got some, my son's a pretty good player. That whole cliche of watch out for my player this year. So we, we got excited about that. And, but I want to connect this all to if I lived in Vegas from in a warm weather climate from the ages of eight, nine, eight, kind of eight through the 12, 13 range here, would I just focus completely on baseball? And I think that's what we're seeing nowadays as we focus more on the sport of baseball. I know like I was listening to a, a YouTube video the other day about the sports specialization, like with gymnastics, that's a whole different sport of these, these young athletes specializing at ages like five, right? Cause they have to learn the tumbling and they have to learn all these things and generate all those skills to get to the point where they can really compete at these early ages. And these Olympians are in their teens. They're so young. So they start earlier. So I don't want to really d discuss much of the gymnastic side of it because that's a completely different avenue. I'm not completely all familiar with that. But sticking within the realm here of baseball, I think we're seeing a lot of things happen. I think, why are us as parents, if I'm talking to you as a parent here, why do we feel the need to have our baseball athlete play full round, full year, let's say 10 months as an eight, nine, 10, 11 year old. So I think that's really the big question. What are we doing in regards to keeping our young athletes safe? And I think when you talk to like doctors or you hear doctors talk, and it seems like we have more and more, Dr. James Andrew is like the leading, the Tommy John specialist, that ulnar collateral ligament. So that's like the biggest fear, right? Of our, of our, as a parent is our athlete getting hurt. I want to fast forward real quickly to like my son to, to give you an idea of what happened. My son got hurt his senior year. COVID was his junior and senior year. So what, 2020, 2021, and didn't get to play a whole lot because of COVID. So if you're a parent, you, you understand how hard that was to watch. And so they're not practicing as much as they can. Uh, they can't get on the fields. And to cut the story short, he got hurt his senior year. And I think they only played about 10 games, roughly. Ended up having to get that PRP injection. So decided to do the plasma. So it was a partial tear in his elbow. As he was starting, he was a center fielder, outfielder that was wanting to now pitch. And, you know, that which requires a whole different a set of skills, set of throwing, and now combining both, right, of being able to chuck the ball from the outfield, which he did really well, to now getting on the mound and trying to become a pitcher and use the mechanics in the body and the specific skills that you need for that. So he had a, a partial tear in his elbow senior year, and that turned into he graduates, then he gets to a local college here at CSN, the junior college, has to, he red shirts. Now they're just coming out of COVID. So we have players, that, so there's just no roster space and probably wasn't really quite ready for junior college ball yet at that level. So he red shirts and then decides that after that red shirt year, he didn't play summer ball or anything like that. So again, not, didn't really play a whole lot. And then is somewhat training to get back and ready. And he decides that fall uh, to, to become a pitcher, to become a full-time pitcher. So starts training for that, getting ready for that. And then he blows out his arm. So tears the elbow, has a full tear, and which is obviously devastating as a parent. So the, the reason I tell you that is now he, my son wasn't someone that played. He played uh, some flag football, a little bit of basketball, and, and then baseball. I guess the point of this story is he was an example of 
he didn't play like 10 months of the year of baseball. And still we have those stories that happen where you still can get hurt because throwing, right? Being an overhand thrower and, and really specializing in baseball and just throwing so much, our arms just aren't built and meant for that. That's what the doctors tell us. That like, we're not meant to just throw baseballs, thousands of them every, every year. And so it, at some point the arm can just give out. If you played the game a long time, you're going to probably experience some major soreness, some major pains, and, and very likely could have a surgery. You know, I, I had surgery. I tore my labrum in professional baseball. And these things do happen. But I think what we're trying to do as parents, as doctors, as orthopedic surgeons, is how do we protect our kids from getting hurt? How do we protect them from the burnout to where I think the stat is roughly around 70% of athletes stop playing their sport at age 13. It's like that. I think eighth grade, seventh, eighth grade year, they're about a year away from going into high school. And at some point they've just made this decision. I don't want to continue to play. Maybe it's because they're going into high school. That's probably a, a reason. And then I think another big reason is because they are burned out. They've been training like they're professional athletes from the ages of eight up until 12 and 13. So five, six years of training roughly for these serious athletes. And when I say serious, we're talking like the club type baseball player that is playing in these warmer climates for say 10 months out of the year and not getting the proper rest to allow their bodies, to allow their tendons, to allow their ligaments to recover. And I think that's probably the biggest frustration from now I'm a parent watching from the outside in of these young athletes participating in baseball 10 months out of the year and showing up at, now we're seeing early teens, 13, 14, 15, these kids are having surgeries already. So guys like Dr. James Andrews, the leading surgeon in the world that does Tommy John surgeries, he just talks about, hey, we need to like back up a little bit here and stop worrying about going to get that college scholarship so early and let's give these kids some rest and stop training them like they're professional athletes at such a young age. So I think we would be pretty smart as parents to take heed to those words and just allow our kids to breathe, allow them to just feel a little bit of a break, allow them to go play basketball in the winter. I, I do hitting lessons as a, this is still a big part of what I do. So Monday through Friday, I'm doing hitting lessons and the time of this recording is December 20th. Okay. And it's kids are on Christmas break. I have 30 kids lined up to come hit with me over three days. So we can get it all in and we can enjoy our families and Christmas and, but hitting, that's one thing, but going out, pitching, throwing multiple bullpens in, in regards to at this young age of, of 10, 11, 12, we're throwing two bullpens per week to stay sharp for the upcoming club season. I think we really need to take a look at that. And is that really necessary or can a young player can you take two months off, which is, let's say this is the off season for club ball. Can you take those two months off, hit a little bit still, right? If you want to work on your skills, I don't think that's that big of a deal. Not because I'm a hitting coach, but it's, that's not the stress that we're putting on. It's the arms we need to rest. We need to allow those tendons and ligaments. Uh, and these are the things that when I talk to pitching coaches, when I talk to professional players, that there's breaks there, right? There's breaks to allow them to even heal themselves. They start really getting into the gym. They're working on all the shoulder exercises, all the stability, like they're regaining all of the strength they need for a professional season. But we're still doing the same thing for these young eight to 12, 13 year olds, which is okay. I think we need to do that. I've even heard doctors talk about, Hey, if you're an overhand thrower, like baseball, and you still go play, say, basketball with the action of the elbow and the hand going up over in a shooting action, you really need to be aware of that too because there's still that. It's a catch-22, right? It's what the heck do we do? 
And some of the things that I think we just need to be aware of is like being aware of, are we setting up our kids for disaster, which you could say disasters getting hurt, tearing their arms completely. Amateur career, we had a very am successful amateur career. We went to a couple World Series when I was 13. We lost in Western Regional when I was 14. And then we went to a World Series again when we were 15. This is back in the 90s. And watching those, the pitchers, I wasn't a pitcher. I basically stopped pitching at age roughly 13. Dabbled a little bit up until 15, but once I got to high school, I stopped pitching. But watching like all of my personal friends go through pitching a lot, they pitched a lot from that eight to 13 age prior to high school. And then they continue that now they maybe they're more APO, they're just pitching. And a lot of them got hurt. A lot of them, I had one friend that has a hand that it's maybe an extreme case, but he has a hand that he's got some tendon issues and it, it's not a fully functioning hand because he's broke his arm. I believe he's had two surgeries on his shoulder and one Tommy John. And what was one of those guys that literally broke his arm pitching in a game. So obviously those are extreme cases, but overuse, right? Chasing trophies, coaches not paying attention to pitch counts, overuse, and then pitching a kid on a Friday for that first game of the, the big game of the club ball game. And then that kid, he's maxed out his pitching or just about to, and then you go stick him behind the plate and he's catching the next three or four games. And so these young bodies, can they really handle that stuff? So I know there's this part of us, like as parents, and if you're a coach, hey, we're trying to, we're trying to develop some toughness here. Of course we are. We're trying to develop toughness, but we, do we really need to be having these kids in these scenarios where they're pitching and catching and just overthrowing for 10 months, more the longevity of it for this long period of time? And then a question I think we need to ask our kids that are playing the sport for 10 months out of the year, because they, I have a lot of uh, really great conversations with parents and they tell me like, yeah, my kid just loves it. He wants to play all the time. That's all he wants to do. He doesn't want to play football or he doesn't want to play basketball. That's great. But sometimes maybe we not necessarily tell the kid like, hey, let's go try another sport for a couple months, but maybe sometimes that might we might have to protect our kid in that way. Hey, let's go, let's take a break from baseball a little bit. Let's go play some flag football. I know a lot of parents are concerned about tackle football at the early ages with concussions and all that stuff. But obviously you make your judgment on that with you and your family. But can we do a better job? That's all I really wanted to discuss with you here today. And I'm really curious, like, what are we as a parent doing? Do, do we have FOMO? Do we have that fear of missing out of if my son doesn't play from eight to 13, 10 months out of the year, is that not going to set him up for that scholarship opportunity or the chance to go play pro ball? Do we need to treat these young athletes like they're professionals at such an early age? Are you making them go practice hitting off a tee for an hour plus a day and you're starting to see signs like a, a resentment from them? They have that kind of like annoyance within them. They're like, mom or dad, leave me alone. So I don't need to go hit for an hour off the tee every day. I'm not trying to become Mike Trout. I'm nine years old. So a suggestion on that would be as a hitting coach, when I tell my players, hey, you need to, if I teaching them a skill or something and they learn something from a skill standpoint and they want to practice and work on it at home, I'm like, hey, you don't need to go do this for an hour. We're talking, let, let's get really specific and focused and let's spend maybe 15 minutes on it and move the ball around on the tee. Usually if you're by yourself sometimes with that tee work and so you don't have somebody to flip to you unless you have some type of special machine to flip to you. So being very focused on the work instead of, do I need to go have my nine-year-old spend an hour of extra hitting? Now, you might be that parent would be like, yeah, they do need to go do that because because if they're going to go play professional baseball, they need to develop that work ethic now. And I just be a little careful with that because I think that is the point where, and, and again, this is baseball, 
I know we, we've hear stories. Um, one of my favorite books is Andre Agassi's book, Open. And he talks about the dragon, right? That his tennis ball machine that was spitting out balls to him. And he had to hit, I think it was thousands of them every day where his dad, Mike Agassi was making him do that. And there was some huge resentment there and, and Andre hated his dad for it. And I know some, some of us might be like, yeah, I'll, I'll be the bad guy and all that stuff. But, and that's, we could simply say that's what made him what he is today. And the work ethic was all, you know, was all there, but is it really worth becoming a star to have resentment and hate your father f for all the glory, for all the fame, for all the money? I don't know. It's a question we need to ask ourselves. And I know I get it. I train, I train athletes in mindset and I train athletes in, in doing the work ethic and in doing the routines and have to create the habits, but doing it more in a very focused in a smart way to where we have the desire, we have the fire to go and compete and do it. And just being aware of we, we need to recover. My, I had back issues. I had hip issues. I had all these type of issues. I had foot issues of just straight by the time I was a pro around the early twenties, like my body, I, it started to even break down. So that's part of the game. But are you doing it though for you? Are you doing it for my son? He's going to get a college scholarship. He's going to go play pro and your son's 10 years old. So being aware of yourself, what is your mindset as a parent? Do, do we need to pump the brakes a little bit and learn to allow our kid? Does he really want this? Do we need to take a look at this and maybe go play a different sport? So the and it's, you're doing it for him. You're doing it to allow his tendons, his body to relax and recover a little bit and really almost take their mind and focus off the sport for a few months to go play a different sport. You're not missing out on anything. If you go play a different sport and get away from baseball for a few months, you talk to probably any big league player as a scout, as a former big league player. We're talking about a different level of athlete. You go watch a big league game, like these are, you have the 20 to 80 scouting scale. These are all incredible athletes. Even guys that are somewhat overweight, thicker bodies, they're really good athletes, right? They could probably all go shoot hoop. They could all, they could, a lot of them dunk. Like I, I remember I, the first time I dunked, I was a freshman in high school. I was 14 years old. Why? Because I practiced jumping. I got into that and was really like at 12, 13, when I would have that window, I was jumping all the time. And so practicing and, and learning how to utilize my body, learning how to move and to be an athlete, I think allowed me to go out and play center field and just have to go back on a ball. That was easy to come in on a ball. That was easy. Why? Because it's not because I played 10 months of baseball because I didn't growing up. It's because I played football. I learned how to cut. I learned how to move, right? In basketball, it's all quick twitch. You're moving very fast. The quick twitch, right? That's another term that scouts used. I think basketball is great for that. I think football is going to generate some toughness. Uh, learning how to get hit, learning how to hit someone is more getting some aggression going and, and taking that aggression and the confidence that it can you know, bring to you when we talk about with hitting. I want you to be a controlled, aggressive hitter. So there still has to be aggression. We can't be passive at the plate. So I think football and basketball, where it's more, there's more body contact. There's more, we're learning how to, to utilize those things for us so we can go get it. So just being aware, are you as a parent, are you feeling like you're missing out if you don't go do these things really early? Being aware of, I know some of us tend to get into this if my son doesn't go play for the next few months or during the winter or doesn't show up for these practices from December to February, he's going to lose his spot on the team, on the club team. So to me, that's on the coaches. And, and that's in a way a little bit of BS, if I'm being quite frank. Uh, you should allow players to go do that. If you're a coach, allow these players to go do that. Don't penalize them for not coming to your special little practice 
and, and that he's not committed because he's missing out on your practice. Let him go play basketball. That is, that's all ego and that's all on you and your organization and, and stop. Just stop with that nonsense if they're 8, 9, 10, 11 years old. So be aware of that if you're a coach. So obviously if you're a coach or, or, or even a dad or, or someone, that their son is just playing Little League Baseball, this doesn't really apply because you're probably just going to go do Little League in the spring. There's that three month, three, four month window. That's not what I'm really talking about here because you, you might, yeah, we're only going to play spring and then we're going to go through all that. But man, it, it's really interesting. And I think if you're in a colder climate, you don't even really have to worry about this. I think it's really more of the warm climate states. Like I'm in Vegas. We have, we all know what the warm climate states are that, that have that ability to play the 10 months plus out of the year. So let's just be aware. Let's be aware as parents, what are we really trying to do? Are we forcing this upon our players? Can we back up a little bit? Can we back up and allow them to want to go do their T work and instead of every day coming home from work? Hey, Johnny, did you get your T work in? And being, that's annoying, right? If your mom or dad did that to you, that's annoying. I, I'm super grateful for my parents. That never happened. If my dad was to force me to go do stuff, I would have just, I probably would have been like, this ain't worth it to me. And that's just me, but maybe you're like me as well. I was all internally driven. And that's to me, the greatest thing you can have. If your athlete is internally driven, that means they want it. If you're finding yourself, you want it more than they do, that's an issue. And that's going to come out with the way you show up. That comes out when I'm doing a hitting lesson and mom or dad sitting behind watching every swing and then making comments during a lesson. Hey, you got to do this. You got to do that. That comes out. Let the kid learn. Let the kid feel the swing change. Let the kid feel what the coach is trying to do. Let him concentrate. Let him focus on what he's trying to do and get out of the way. You're tr likely as a parent, I know you're trying to develop and build an independent, smart person, human being, right? They want that. They want you to be there for them, but they also want you to back away, let them figure it out. When you're constantly on them, you're constantly telling them everyone that you're not doing it right. But these are the kids where they're still living with you when, when they're 30 because you haven't given them the freedom to go. Go do it, man. Let their internal clock, let their internal fire within them, let them have it. Let them go. Let them feel it. Hopefully this makes sense to you. We're obviously trying to keep our kids safe. We have some control there. So let's control that a little bit more in regards to let them play a different sport. Let them go figure things out. Let them be athletes. You do want them to play in college. If you do want them, if they're good enough and have the talent and the work ethic to be a professional player one day, it has to be on them. You, you can't be the driving force here. It usually doesn't work out and there's going to be huge resentment from the athlete to you and you're going to wonder what the heck happened. So I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this episode. If you enjoyed, make sure you share this with someone and I'll see you in the next show.